good instructors out there are going to do everything they can to make you not feel any of that negative stuff. Hi there. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 474, with today's guest, Mr. Brian Lawrence. Who am I? I'm Jeremy Lesniak, host for the show and founder here at Whistlekick. And everything that we've got going on at Whistlekick is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you want to know more about what that means, go to whistlekick.com. That's the place to learn all about our projects and our products. Speaking of products, you can buy most of the things that we make at whistlekick.com. There's a store right there. And if you use the code PODCAST15, you'll save, you guessed it, 15% off every single thing over there. From books to apparel to uniforms to sparring gear, this show gets an entirely separate website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, because we keep it easy. This show comes out twice a week, and the entire purpose behind everything we're doing we're working hard to connect, to educate, to inspire those of you involved in the traditional martial arts throughout the world. It's a tall order, but if you're up for helping us, we would appreciate that help. There are a whole bunch of ways you can do that. You can make a purchase, like I said. You can share this or any other episode, follow us on social media, tell a friend, grab a book on Amazon, maybe leave a review somewhere, or Support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. That's the place to go for that. And if you support us with $2 a month, that's the minimum that they let us do. It's great. Thank you. We'd appreciate that. But if you step up to $5 a month, you're going to get more stuff, more content, more episodes, more video, blog posts from me, all kinds of stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. Let's talk about today's guest. When I sit down to talk with someone on this show, I have no idea where we're going to go. Yeah, there are questions that I ask frequently, but if you've been listening to the show, you know that the answers to those questions lead us in directions. And sometimes those directions are very different. On today's episode, Mr. Lawrence and I talk about, yeah, his journey through the martial arts, but I think you're going to notice a theme, and I'm not going to ruin it. I had a great time talking to him. And I think you're going to have a great time listening to the conversation. What's happening? Uh, you know, just uh, <laughs> <laughs> starting out my day in a, a little different way than normal. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you doing that. Yeah, well, I appreciate the opportunity, so thanks a ton. Hey, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's my job. <laughs> I, know, I, I feel guilty every time I say that. People <laughs> ask me what I do, and... You know, if I'm if I'm giving them a short answer, there's usually some portion of it where I say, "Well, you know, I want to talk to martial artists from all over the world," and they either raise their eyebrows and wonder how that could possibly be part of a job, or they say, "Wow, that's really cool." Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of those pinchable moments, I guess. Yeah. I say yeah. That I do, I do this for work. Yeah. How's your morning starting out? Oh, it's going pretty well. I, uh, you know, I've I've learned that if if I go right from I don't know if you know, but we we do a morning show um, live on YouTube. So my my first cup of coffee is six thirty a.m. every day in front of the camera, and then if I go right from that because it's about a twenty minute show, if I go right from that to my desk, I've got about ninety minutes to two hours from like seven to nine a.m before the world wakes up and I get so much done. All right. But if I don't go right from one to the other, I don't do anything until nine o'clock. Yeah. I don't wake up until 9 a.m. No, I know what you mean about that morning time, how productive you can be in that if uh, you take a little advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. What's your, what's your morning routine like? Um, well, it's been kind of messed up for a while lately because <laughs> we, uh, we went, uh, I went from having a, a normal out of the house job, uh, about a, over a year ago to, um, ending up running our school full time. And, uh, so oh. that changed how the day looks, uh, though, though it's made me a little, I got to get back to discipline. 
um, getting to bed at a good time. So I wake up early. I, I'm a morning person, really. And I used to, I'd always be like, man, if I sleep in past six, I'm sleeping in. And, uh, and I, and I haven't gotten back to that. So I want to get back to that, but normally it's get up and, uh, get my, uh, my eight year old ready for school and walk her to school and, and then uh, eventually see the uh, almost two year olds get up, uh, eventually. And, you know, chat with my wife and kind of just see how the day goes. And then I get started. So whether that's working on stuff here in the house or if I end up going out, uh, like to the, my martial arts school or something like that. So mm. I'll just kind of depends, but most days lately have been kind of just trying to get on track here at home and get used to this uh, pattern and, and make it a better pattern. Yeah, that's got to be really, I'm, I'm going to use the word distracting, but that sounds negative. It's got to be tough to focus when your your wife and your kid are around. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we've, we've talked about like, because the school, we're into a point where I have a, a computer at the school um, and how that's like, we were just discussing it yesterday. That's one of our goals is making sure we can get to that point where I can have that. So then I can step away and have all that focus there without distractions of home, you know, and it's just like, oh, you walk yeah. to the house, like, oh, that should be picked up now. It's like, oh, no, 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 it's back to work, get back to work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that definitely can add to that challenge of staying focused. So it's amazing the things that we will distract ourselves with under yeah. the guise of, but it needs to be done or it's productive or I'm not wasting time. I really do need to wash the bathroom mirror right now. Yep. Absolutely. That's I am. I am the poster child for that. <laughs> I will start just like, ah, quick do that. So yeah, I gotta, I myself have to work hard at getting back on that. So if I once get in a while, I'll show people. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, if I get back on my better sleep schedule, I know it will just change my, my pattern. It'll change my day and all that. So, I just got to get back into that self-disciplined uh, Brian again. So, I'm not always great at disciplining myself, so I kind of outsource all of that to my calendar. And once in a while, I'll show people my calendar and everything is scheduled. I mean, down to cleaning the cat's litter box. And it keeps me from forgetting because if I don't, I'm either in a constant state of anxiety because of all the things, oh, I got to do that. 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 Or I just forget things and realize three weeks later, I haven't watered the plants. Oh, They're yeah. All dead. Yep. You know, that kind of thing. Right. And if I show people, they just, they, they, they turn away. I've had people, you know, just visibly shake looking at my calendar, just the sheer volume of appointments <laughs> that are on there. Funny. But that's yeah. not really what we're here to talk about. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, we we could we could turn this into, you know, Brian and Jeremy give work from home advice. Yes, <laughs> and, and I don't know about you, but mine would be all under the headings of don't do these things. Right. <laughs> I don't know what to do, but I can tell you what not to do. Um, lately, it, it's been um, get out of the house as quickly as possible and go to Panera, and be really nice to the people at the counter, and they'll give you a a mug and you can sit there all day and drink coffee. I get a lot done. You know, you know, with that, I can just say that getting out of the house early in the day helps me personally with that productivity yeah. feeling you get out and you're like, Oh, wow, I'm like ready to take on the world. And so that's a, that would be a good, uh, like I talk about having uh, our computer, having a computer at the school for me to work on when it comes to that type of stuff. I think just that step, that process would be uh, now my brain is shifting into you're out, you're productive, get going. So I can see how you sneak into Panera is a a beneficial thing early in the day. (laughs) And putting on real pants. Everybody who, everybody who hears that you work from home thinks, Oh, you could hang out in your pajamas and just drink coffee and work. And and you can hang out in your pajamas and drink coffee, but you're not getting any work done. if That's what you do. (laughs) Right. To me, that's a signal to my brain that, hey, I'm, I'm sick and, and apparently I'm still throwing it back to being 13 and watching The Price is Right on the couch. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Plinko. Thanks. Thanks. I just watching Plinko. <laughs> we should probably shift gears before we entirely lose the audience. Because, it, I mean, this is just rolling, right? I mean, let's just, let's just keep it going. <laughs> the audio is good. We're talking. I don't, 
I don't see any need to to stop and explain anything to you. You've got it. You're 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 doing fine. I mean, if oh, unless you don't want to want any of the stuff we just talked about to go out. <laughs> I'll I'll let you make the the professional call on that. I don't know if everybody likes this, the, you know, the banter stuff before we start digging in, but I do. And uh, it's my show. So right, there um, you go. We're just, we're just going to let it hang out. We're just going to leave it there. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about some martial arts stuff. Yeah. So you have, you have your own school. And I think you said about a year ago that became your job. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Your full time job? Yeah. What was, what was making that transition like? Um, Gary? <laughs> uh yeah it's uh definitely done earlier than many other people would do it but we did the uh you know as in how big our school was the, the income coming in from it um but i had been in healthcare for 10 years and was no longer doing that and uh had uh considered some other other things uh for employment still thinking well maybe this school will be kind of a side thing because i've had the school now for 10 years and it was always kind of this very much a part-time side thing that was like, well, if I could, um, but then, uh, actually last, uh, you know, in April, uh, my wife and I talked and we decided let's give it a shot full time. And, uh, that's a, a scary thing. Um, a, a kind of a freeing thing. Cool too. Cause it was like, wow, this is what I'm going to do. I felt like, okay, all those things that I couldn't get done before I can now start to get them done, you know, cause it's like now, uh, every day is about, you know, building this business so it can take care of uh, my family. Are you willing to give student numbers? Is that, is that something you're willing to share? <laughs> sure. I can okay. share that. And that's like I said, this is where, you know, many, you know, I've, I know other school owners, I've read lots of stories where usually guys like, oh, I got 80, I'm considering going full time. And I'm like, man, uh, you know, right now we're working around 40. Um, yeah. But uh, the, the challenge for me, I found out was, especially with how, uh, you know, with what's going on with my family. Uh, uh, when I had a full-time job, the martial arts school had very, very little time. Um, my wife and I have uh, been foster parents, and we uh, uh, adopted two of our uh, girls, and there was a lot that went on with that. Um, my wife has dealt with some health uh, challenges over the years, so sometimes there was where I had to help her out with things where I was called away from stuff. So. It wasn't like the, it was easy to just build this nice, you know, big school on the side. It was kind of like when I could fit it in, I could fit it in. And then we got to this point of, all right, let's, let's make this uh, transition over to being full-time. So now it's like, okay, so all those things I should have tried to squeeze in in the past, you know, wasn't able to. Now it's okay. Now it's a lot of catch up, which uh, is definitely paying off because we're, you know, we're seeing things going in, the, in a positive direction. Nice. Whenever I, I talk to businesses, you know, whether it's a, a martial arts school or, you know, other things, I, I think some people who listen to the show know that, you know, I do some business and marketing consulting outside of Whistlekick um, because it's, you know, it's a skill set I have and it helps fund Whistlekick uh, because spoiler alert, Whistlekick is not this massive company that rakes in a bunch of money and I'm, I'm living, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a gilded mansion. Uh, none of those things are happening. But when I, when I talk to business owners, you know, school owners or, or otherwise, there's always this point where there's not quite enough money to get help and there isn't enough time to move forward to make more money. And it's this, it's this, what do we do? And it sounds like that's, you were in that position too. That's quite the leap of faith to give up the full-time job to focus on the school. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that process or, or that discussion in your, in your head, in your family, with other people, you know, what, what that conversation was like? You know, it's, it's really, it came down to um, the support of my wife of her saying, let's, let's do this. Um, Cause when I first started the school 10 years ago, it was very much on a whim. I mean, when I was, when I was a high schooler, um, I thought, to be cool to own a martial arts school one day. I was, I had been an instructor at uh, the school I was at. And so it was kind of always this thing of like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that someday. But then, you know, life happened to kind of get put on the back burner. And we were, uh, we were actually in uh, Milwaukee at a church and 
the pastor was showing me around. He's like showing me the space that they had. And he goes, there's this big room. And he goes, I want to start a martial arts program here. Because it was in a really uh, dicey neighborhood of the city. And uh, he didn't know I was a martial artist at the time. He said he wanted to have something there to as a good, healthy thing for the, the kids of the community. And I go, oh, I got my black belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> and he's like, really? And so at that point, it, it kind of, it really started on a whim. Um, but during that time, you know, I had, had the full-time job taking uh, care of my wife. And then we got into fostering and having children. And uh, it was always a hard thing to put that, uh, put the energy that it needed. And, um, you know, just know, wondering, are we going to take this to that next step? And so really when it came down to this last year, it was, uh, really my wife giving that support to say, let's, let's do this. And that's kind of what, uh, cause I would have done it, you know, if I was by myself, no children, it would have been like, sure, I'll do this a long time ago. But it was that, that moment to, to encourage me and help me and, and give me that opportunity to go all right. Cause if I have her support, I got the support I need. So kind of jumped in with it. Now, other than throwing your morning routine off, what's changed? Um, by, by owning a school, uh, running it full time. Um, yeah, it, you know, it does give me more time to really look into me as a martial artist. Um, you know, the, the arts, that I practice, what, how I teach, what I teach. Um, it's giving me more time to, to think through uh, what's important curriculum-wise for my students. Um, really uh, just a lot, a lot more time, you know, even though there's all the, the like the business aspect of, of that stuff, but still it's just that time where my brain starts to think of like, okay, is there something different you could do? Is there something more that you can do? Is there something you should change? So that definitely with, with running the school full time has uh, given me that opportunity really strangely, because you'd think, well, can't you think about that any time of your day, but now it's, it's more purposeful. Um, so since we have made that transition, I'm, you know, able to implement more of those things and, and think through them a little more clearly than I would have before and feel more confident in my decisions. And what's been the response from your students? Uh, it's been good. The school has been growing considerably. Um, and I, there's a, excitement. Uh, there's the families that have been with me for a while that uh, I, I know are, are excited to see this happening. Um, so I would kind of say that the, the newer families they don't really, they don't really know. They just get to, <laughs> they just get to reap uh, everything that uh, I've been sowing. So it's all, that's all a positive thing for sure. And I know we're going to come back. We're going to touch on your school and everything that's going on now, but I want to rewind the tape a bit and go back to you and, and your martial arts journey. You know, so what, what was your impetus? How did you find martial arts? <laughs> Yeah, um, I started when I was in eighth grade. It would have been January of my eighth grade, right after uh, basketball season had finished, and I was not good at basketball. I just, I just loved playing sports of any kind. And uh, I remember when I was, I think, in second grade. I'm pretty sure second grade. I got a book back when you could. I don't know if they still do this nowadays, but I think they do. But we got the thing where you could order books from it, and uh, they'd get delivered to the school. Uh, you could buy a book. And I got one called From Chuck Norris to the Karate Kid. And I still have that book, as tattered as it is, but that's the first martial arts book I ever had. And uh, and it's and it's some, there was just that thing, I don't know if it was, I don't know how many of our uh, male listeners, you know, as a young boy, they were already planning on wanting to do martial arts. But of course, I was that kind of boy where it was like, it just was a cool thing. You know, you, you jump off a peer into a, a lake and you, you do what you think is a flying sidekick, even though I didn't know what it was called back then. Um, but uh, my family, we, we grew up on a, I grew up on a dairy farm, uh, just a moderate sized dairy farm in North Central Wisconsin. And uh, we moved off of that in seventh grade. And so then eighth grade came along and my family had more time. I know if we were on a farm, I sure would not have been doing martial arts uh, due to the, the distance to travel to the school and all that. But now that we are off off the farm, my my 
parents just allowed me to. I think they just saw an ad. It was from someone that we knew that owned a martial arts school in the small town 10 miles away. It was a basically a, a father and son that I had known. He was in my school, but they opened this the martial arts school up in another town. And I think they had an ad for like an intro course or something. And I don't know if they pointed it out to me, honestly, but when the opportunity came for me to sign up for it, we went to the school. I, I remember to this day walking up the steps in this old armory and walking up to the instructor who I kind of knew a little bit and uh, stumbling over my words and saying, I'm here to register, you know, for Taekwondo. And, uh, and I started, and I was hooked after my first class. Um, it, and it was, I started, it was Taekwondo and about the, this school had opened one year before I started and about, I don't know if it was half a year or, up to a year after I started, he also started teaching Aine and Eskrima. And as soon as he started teaching that, I joined that program also. Um, and my parents were supportive uh, of this. I mean, they had to drive over 10 miles from the one town to the next town. Um, you know, even after selling the farm and having, you know, whatever regular jobs my family had, uh, you know, was not, uh, not made of money, I should say that. So I know my parents sacrificed a lot for me to do this. Um, and I had, you know, my sisters doing all their oppor- uh, their different opportunities and activities and things themselves. And they encouraged me to do this, like not push me. They just said, here, you can do this. And after my first class, I loved it. And I went as often as I could. I ended up dropping out of high school sports because I was like, I'd way rather do martial arts. And I, I really love doing sports. Um, but I wanted to do be at the at class as much as I could. And like when I played football football my freshman year, uh, I got to class, I think one or two times in the month of September. And I was like, that's not cool. <laughs> and so it was a tough decision, but I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to drop sports. I just want to do martial arts. And then eventually I could drive. And, um, my instructor ended up opening a second and third location. And so he was open six days a week. And by that point I was training typically five, six days a week, uh, often multiple classes a day if I could. And that's kind of the, the long story short, I guess. It's not often that a teenager is going to choose martial arts over team sports in school. Uh, We've heard about it a few times on here, but anybody who's ever owned a martial arts school or even has participated and paid attention has seen that once kids hit adolescent age, there's a really good chance they're going to fade away because they want to be in those groups with their peers. Right. What was it for you? I mean, you, you, you did the exact opposite. What was it that made you say, you know, the heck with football, martial arts is more important to me. You know, uh, that's a good question because I, I that is the battle for uh, martial arts instructors is always going like, where are the teenagers? Because uh, yeah, if they start as a kid, they usually quit by the time they're a teenager, except for those rare few. And it's hard. It's like pulling teeth to get a teenager to start a martial arts program. So for me, I mean, I, I wasn't, my decisions weren't dictated by everybody else, like the, the students in school and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I wasn't the, the most popular kid. <laughs> I was just, the, you know, your typical kid in a small town. And, you know, I had my friends that were playing sports, but um, I, I want, always wanted to do it. I've always just been, you know, the typical physical adventurous seeking type of, type of kid. And, uh, and I guess, I don't know, when I, when I started, I was just like, I can do this. I can do this really well. And, and I get to do what kind of not what I want, but I mean, I get to go at my pace, which I push myself, whether I was playing basketball, football, baseball, I track, I, I always push myself to my limit. I was never just kind of moseying along, just trying to do it at an okay pace. So when I got into martial arts, it was so individualized that I, I ate it up. And I think that might be part of it is that it allowed me to do what I wanted with it, um, you know, because I know there were the other students that, you know, would be there, um, you know, for whatever reason, mom and dad were wanting them to be there. They thought it was just fun. And I sure thought it was fun, but I love the challenge. I, I eat up uh, challenges like that. So I think that's really what it was, was, me just going, I can be me in this. I can push myself as hard as I want to. And I don't know. I just, I, I loved it. it it's, it's a tough answer. Like, because I think about that, like, yeah, why did I? Why did I do that when most teenagers don't want to? I, I was happy to do that. Um, so I don't know. I just really got this 
see who I was in a, in that. And it was independent of a coach. It was independent of my teammates. You know, success wasn't determined by how our season went. It was just, I got to do it. I felt very good. I pushed myself and, uh, you know, succeeded at the level that I was, I was able to. I'm going to speculate here. I'm, I'm going to make a guess. And, and before I do that, I'm going to pose a question. Academically. Were your parents, uh, let's say, encouraging and setting of high standards? Um, you know, my my parents were the type that didn't tell me what to do a lot of. Um, I think they kind of just expected. So, uh, like, I, I had really good grades in school. Um, I wasn't a valedictorian or anything, but I definitely, I always excelled in school. I always... Uh, you know, I guess if you want to say <laughs> did did what I was supposed to, stayed out of trouble, stuff like that. Uh, they they didn't have to tell me it, um, and and I don't know if it's because they just saw they knew I was doing it, um, but they, I don't know. That's, that's, mm. a, that's a good question. It's starting to make me think about my parents a lot more with that. But you know, they they again they didn't verbalize that they expected anything out of me. I think they just uh, they raised this uh, all of us kids in a way that we knew that we were to, you know, strive to do our best. We were to, you know, treat people the right way with, again, without them saying much at all. Uh, it just kind of naturally came out. So I don't know if that answers your question. Well, it, it does. And so one of the things that I've, I've found myself saying at various times over the years is that martial arts is one of the few things that gives back exactly and only what you put in. There's a, a direct one-to-one -one correlation between effort and results. And there aren't a whole lot of things in the world that we have that. And generally speaking, high school, middle school, academics are one of those things. You know, you, you put in the time, you study, you pay attention, you read, you're going to get good grades. Whether or not you're actually learning anything is, is a whole different and deeper conversation we won't get into. But for a, a, a lot of kids, and I was certainly one of them, I correlated my effort in school with the results of grades. And in elementary school, outside of martial arts, soccer was my sport. But the correlation wasn't there. It didn't matter if I was an amazing or a terrible soccer player. I was one of a group of people on the field. And, you know, Maybe I'd score a goal or maybe one would get by me, but it wasn't just about my effort. And I found that to be really frustrating and it, in, it discouraged me from putting in more effort. And I see that with a lot of people, but yet in martial arts, you get a lot more of that control because martial arts isn't just about the athletic side. It's about the overall growth of you as a martial artist, however that's defined in, in the school you're in you start to see that correlation, that one-to-one. -one. And so I think for a lot of kids who don't do well or don't jive with that team sport dynamic or maybe aren't as athletically inclined as some other people, you find space in martial arts. I mean, that was my story, and it sounds like that might be similar to yours. Yeah, yeah, and that it really does, when you think about it for uh, especially that age group, uh, when you're trying to figure out, do I fit in here? And you try these different things, uh, such as sports. And if it's not going, think of how many uh, teens in particular growing up could have found uh, kind of like their place, <laughs> you know, at least at least in that in that difficult time of growing up as a teenager. So, yeah, find something where you go, you know what? I, I'm feeling good about me and what I'm putting into this activity you know, compared to, yeah, that sport where it is dictated by a lot of others. Absolutely. So let's move up in time a little bit. You know, you go from eighth grade, you're starting Taekwondo, ninth, sounded like ninth grade, 10th grade, you start the Eskrima, and you're still plugging along, you've shed a lot of the things in your life in favor of martial arts. And what happens as you get to the end of high school? Um, well, uh, actually it's interesting though, you're in Vermont. I actually spent my first year of college in Vermont at a uh, very small school called Sterling college up in the Northern part of the state. Yeah. I'm familiar um, with Sterling. And, uh, 
I had a martial arts club out there because uh, when I was, uh, I became an instructor, I guess, as a, a senior, I was a, an assistant instructor before I was a senior in high school. Uh, but then I was, you know, became, started teaching classes for my instructor at a school a little bit. And, uh, you know, he had even talked about one of the bigger, uh, and when I say bigger, it's 20,000 people. So one of the bigger uh, <laughs> uh, towns around us, he was saying, you know, we have plans to start a school there. Um, you know, he and his wife were telling me that they said, we haven't even told our son who was my age and a good friend. They're like, but this is something we're looking at doing. We'd like you to run that school. And it was kind of like, wow, here's this opportunity. Well, that just didn't, you know, pan out because I was planning to move away and everything for, for college. Um, but I still wanted to teach. So I was like, Hey, I just want to do a club. So, you know, he backed me in that. And so my first year of college was, uh, having a, a club out there. I had a, it's a very, very small school. I mean, very, very small, um, probably 60 people in my class. So our listeners know when I say how small of a college it is, it was that small. Yeah. Um, I, I want to underscore this. This is not 60 people in your martial arts club, right? This, this is, is 60 in the college. people in your academic class. Yep. And so <laughs> I had a few uh, students from there. I don't know, maybe about 10 or so. Uh, That's a really good percentage. Out. Yeah, yeah. It was around 10, maybe a little bit more. I had one of uh, one kid that was, you know, a son of one of the uh, faculty and uh, or actually one or two of their kids. Um, so I did that there that first year, but then I ended up moving back uh, to Wisconsin after that year. Uh, I took some, I think it was called Budokai karate classes at uh, one of the at one of the universities in Wisconsin here, and then I ended up moving to Minnesota. And at that time, I kind of got out of formal training. I was on my own trying to train here and there, um, but of course, I was busy, real busy with schooling still at that time, um, and uh, had kind of a period around there in my twenties where I didn't consistently form, uh, you know formally train anywhere. Um, so it'd be kind of on my own. I'd, I'd be working on things. Um, so yeah, that was kind of what it was like after getting out of high school. I want to talk about that, that time without the formal training, because that is something a lot of people don't admit. And it's something that I'll even confess. I had a two year span and it's kind of a dark time and I'm in, sometimes embarrassed to talk about it. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to kind of lead this conversation because I don't want you to have to go first, right? On a subject I'm already <laughs> identifying as embarrassing. That seems like an unfair thing. Hey, come on the show and then I'll, I'll put you on the spot and make you embarrassed. <laughs> it's, it's hard to do something, anything for a very, very long time and not have other stuff pop up or get in the way. And if you listen to past episodes, anybody who knows, you know, the things that I've said knows that I, I'm not. Um, I'm not throwing shade here. I'm not saying that because there was some break in people's formal training and, and being a student of someone that you're, you're a bad person or not a martial artist. I, I, you know, just in case you haven't heard those episodes, I want to make sure you know that. But it can be really unsettling and it can be really, um, I felt lost. What was it like for you? Um, you know, part of that was, you, you know, there's definitely, I, I agree with that thing of like, sometimes you feel like, boy, if I tell some people, you know, are they going to be like, you know, judging you now? Like, well, you know, come on, you took, you took that break in there, you know, like who does that? Um, you know, it, the, the challenge was I was, I had moved around, you know, I was in, uh, from Wisconsin ended up in Vermont, came to a different Wisconsin town for a year and then was in, uh, moved to the twin cities in Minnesota. And was just trying to, you know, get through those, you know, that wonderful time all of us, uh, you know, have when we're young adults. <laughs> um, it was, you know, I, I was, you know, finally, you know, at one point after college, I stayed around there for a little bit and started making, you know, some friends over there and was just kind of distracted by that. Just feeling, all right, cool. You know, I'm, I've been here. I'm kind of getting settled in, finding new relationships, having fun that way. And, uh, you know, it was just on the side, it was, well, okay, yeah, I should go train. So I'd, you know, grab my sticks and go to a park and swing those around for a while or whatever it was that I did. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I, part of me at this point, like if I was to give advice to somebody in that stage, I'd say, well, first off, make sure you are 
consistently training on your own. It, it, don't worry about exactly what you're doing. Just do something. Um, but part of me was also, I think just when I thought about it, it, I think maybe I thought about it too hard of like where I would go to a school. And part of my advice would be to just find, find a place, you know, even if it's a totally different style, go and train somewhere. Um, you know, as long as it seems like it's the right place for your personality, uh, go, you know, and I think part of me might've been holding back from that. I had, you know, considered taking some Aikido classes. I, I took one at this club or, or this school and then, uh, but then I got distracted again cause I'm like, Oh cool. I got, I had all these new friends and part of me is like, Oh, why didn't you just do it? You know? Um, but I think that's definitely one of the big things that I learned during that, you know, as I look back, um, that I would tell anybody, just make sure you don't, don't really quit training and, and feel free to take that opportunity. If you're somebody like me, where you ended up moving around to these different places and you're like, well, I'm not, I'm not near what I'm used to. Well, make it a chance just to step outside, you know, what you're used to. And you may find out later on down the road, you get back to the style, the system, even the school, maybe you were originally from, and you're going to go, wow, look how much more knowledgeable I am now than, uh, than I was before. If I wouldn't have, mm. you know, if I would have not trained at all, you can take what you learn from another style and, and grow so much as a martial artist. I mean, it's not like, you know, anybody's gonna, you know, you're going to be smote for, uh, you know, having a uh, train in a different style or something. So. Right. And if I could go back to 24 year old me, which I think was 24, 25 when I took that break, cause I'd started my own school and I, I had to shut it down just due to professional reasons. And I could have a conversation. I would, there are a couple of things I would tell myself, and I'm curious what you think of these things. First off, I would have myself schedule time through the week to have my own classes with myself, you know, whether that's a Tuesday, Thursday thing or whatever. And maybe I can't do an hour, but even if it's 20 minutes, to not lose the momentum of the frequency of the training. And then the second thing, because one of the things I struggle with that I do really, that I need instructors and I need classes is I'm not good at telling myself what to do. I'm going to work on the things I like to do the most, not the things that I need the most work on. <laughs> and so that, that becomes a little bit of a feedback loop and the, the good skills, you know, if I'm training on my own, maintain or maybe get better and the things that need the most work get even worse. There are, I mean, there, there weren't back then, but now, there are tons of people who post classes, full classes on YouTube. Right. And maybe it's not the same thing, but when they do ABC, maybe you do ABD because you don't do that kick that way or something, but you can still more or less follow along. Right. What about the schedule thing? Would that have worked for you back then? Boy, you know, I'm one of those people that, that, thrives when I have structure, but to sometimes put structure in place, <laughs> that's a whole nother thing. Um, you know, I, I think that would have been it. I mean, for me, really, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm not good at, uh, I'm not a good self-motivator. It, it takes a lot for me to just to be like, okay, do it. But once I start doing it, I'm great. Um, you know, that could help. I just keep thinking, boy, if I would have just signed up for some club, some school, yeah. Where they're like, we're open at this time. I'd be like, oh, you bet I'll be there. And I'm going to like give it everything I got. Um, but if I, you know, if, if we're going to go to what your question is, if I'm not, if that's not an option I'm, I'm, I have or a choice I'm taking, you know, really, I think for, for many people, especially if you're like me and you, and you have that struggle of that um, self-motivation and that self-discipline to say like, I'm going to do this at this time. Yeah, do that. Uh, I think it would have helped me because um, for me, my training when I was on my own was just kind of was sporadic. It was like, yeah, I got some time. Let's, uh, you know, like I say, hop in the car, go over here or, you know, practice this in my apartment or whatever it was. Um, I definitely believe that structure uh, would have helped. Yeah. Would have helped keep me more honed uh, even, I should say, even if it was like just saying like, okay, hey, if you're going to go through and train on your own, Let's make sure you're hitting all of these different things. Um, for instance, forms, you know, and I know not all of the, the, our listeners would are, do that in their style, and that's fine. Um, but 
in in Taekwondo, traditionally, that's what we one of our things that we practice in. And I learned them real easily. I could learn them very fast. I could do them. Uh, I mean, literally, my instructor could show me one time. Basically, I would learn them. Even the more complex, higher ones, I would learn very quickly, and I would have them all memorized. So I was always that was a good thing as an instructor because, um, you know, I know there are instructors out there that sometimes go, "Wait, <laughs> I don't remember this one," and they have to have somebody else. I didn't have that problem. I memorized them really well. I could go training I, when I was not training. I could go a real long time, and all of a sudden show up back up at my original school. Like if I came back to visit my parents, I'd go take a class and I'd had every single form memorized, even though I hadn't done them for over a year, but they're still there. But then finally got one time, it got to a point where I actually uh, finally started losing a little bit of them. Like two of them I combined together and they were the, they weren't one or the other. They were kind of, I went one flipped right into another and I'm like, huh, okay. So if I would have, discipline myself to even just say, okay, so this week go work on your forms or, you know, today you go through these forms and then tomorrow you'll go through these self-defense techniques or this part of your stream of training. That would be better. Um, I, as you were talking about too, of, you know, you want to do the things you want to do, but not necessarily the things you need to do. And that too, for someone who's going to be training on their own, that could be real beneficial of just saying, okay, so Monday I'm going to do this. Tuesday, I'll do this. Wednesday, I'll do this. Just to make sure, even if you spend only 20 minutes at it, hey, at least you did it. Uh, instead of going for six months and not doing it or two years, and then you're like, yeah, now I don't remember, and now I'm back into formal training and struggling, and I wish I wasn't, you know? I got it. And I'm guessing, by the way, that you wrote Taekwondo in the in the form you, you submitted, the confirmed guest form, that you do ITF? Am I yeah. guessing right? <laughs> you could call it that. Uh, you know, I like to get into the whole, you know, really ITF, that's, that's an organization. Um, but you, you could say that. I know when people say that, I know what they're talking about. I even use that too. So yeah, the forms but we those do. those forms? Yep. Yeah. The tech, okay. So I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm curious what, what two forms you were combining, if you remember. <laughs> they were uh, the, the two forms for the red belts, the red belt and the high red belt, uh, Furong and Chungmu. And yeah, yeah kind of went one right into the other. So yeah, I... There, there's a there's a point where that I've done it and I, I was I had a feeling and this is why I asked because the the Taekwondo flavor that I train in is is ITF and when when you get to that that end point and you make that first turn when you've reached that mo forward most point I have absolutely done Kwamu <laughs> <laughs> or or Chung Chung Rong definitely done it wrong uh, so that's, yeah that's I get it. I totally you're get right. It. Yep, you do it there, and then when you're on your way back, you can make the same mistake, too. So, yep, that's that's the spot where it happened. Then I was like, and that's when I realized, shoot, I've gone way too long without being serious about keeping these things up. Um, you know, so that, that's funny you had that same experience. But, uh, yep, that, that's exactly what happened, and that was kind of like, uh, that was an embarrassing moment for me because I always pride myself on I'm like, man, I could take all the information I've learned and, you know, not just forms. Every single thing was, like, kind of kind of locked in there. Then when that wasn't there, I was like, shoot, this is, this has never happened before. Like how, how am I making this mistake here? But then it just drove me to uh, make sure I got back on top of that stuff. Uh, once I got into more formal training again. Back when I was getting ready for my first black belt test in karate and whole different set of forms. So, you know, a, a different group of listeners might be able to get this. And I still remember how terrified I was the first time you know, I was training and back then I was competing and my mother was my coach. And so she was with me quite often. And I remember combining Pinyon Yodon and Pinyon Godon. And they wouldn't uncombine. And I was like, oh, that's silly. Let me do it again. And it happened again. <laughs> and it happened almost every time I did the two forms. Except for the actual testing. And I, I, I remember a lot of really difficult moments of that test. It was very long and, and, and really strenuous. But the most joyful element of that two and a half hours was when I didn't screw that. I screwed up plenty of other things, but I didn't screw that up. And I was like, ah, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> nice. Ah, right on. So let's keep marching through time here. You know, you, you've, you've gotten to this point where you know, you're, you're not training for a little, how, how long, how long was that break? 
Oh, I don't know. I, <clears throat> I honestly, I'm not even sure it was because it was so off and on. Um, you know, it was over two years. Um, you know, and I was about, I lived about two and a half hours from home. So was sometimes when I would get home, I would mm-hmm. try and go and catch a class, uh, where I originally started. And I don't know how often I did that. Um, that's, that's right. so, well, but it was definitely the it was, important part. It was a solid two, two years without formal training. I can say that if not, and then there was kind of a little period in there again, where it was kind of where I was going and then kind of didn't go for a little bit and then got back into it regularly. So kind of off and on in that early twenties time. Mm. Now, one of the things that listeners don't know is the, the sheer volume of email that I get because of this show and because of what we do at Whistlekick. And a number of those emails are from people who have fallen out of training. And they find the show and the show becomes something that connects them with martial arts. And they actually, they use, and it's funny, I can, I can see the pattern. You know, they'll start emailing me and say, you know, I used to train, I haven't trained in a little while and I found the show and finding it really inspiring. And it wants me to get, you know, it makes me want to get back in there, but I'm having a hard time getting started. You know, they're looking for a push and I've actually gotten a lot more confident in this, you know, I'll, I'll send an email back after a few, you know, sometimes there are a couple months in between and just say, so, um, so what do I have to do to get you to start training again? And usually I get an email back within a couple of weeks saying, all right, so that was the push I needed and I've signed up and we all need that push, you know, that, that, you know, an object at rest tends to remain at rest. How did you get moving again? How did you go from infrequent self-training after years into motion? Um, You know, a good part of it was uh, actually moving back to Wisconsin. Um, So I'd been in Minnesota for about three, three years and uh, came back to Wisconsin and I was in a town relatively close to uh, uh, the schools that I, I grew up going to. Um, So at that point I started doing it, um, you know, it's like a 45 minute trip through the, through the country. So it's, uh, you know, I was, I, that's really what it was, was I got back, back home to something familiar. And, uh, you know, that, like I said earlier, I encourage anybody to make sure that they find something, even if they can, if they can uh, afford it, find something, even if it's not what you're familiar with. But, you know, for me, it was okay. I'm back home. I'm, I'm settling down. I felt at home cause I, I, you know, was, at home and uh and i was like okay now i'm back where things are familiar and i really just started getting into it at that point again um for me right on and how did that feel how did that feel in the first few weeks oh really good um i mean it, it was it was great uh i you know hadn't really lost much for strength flexibility and all that stuff like just a little bit uh you know it's still my in my twenties, I was still exercising, you know, I was, um, you know, regularly ran and, uh, did a number of outdoor activities like, you know, rock climbing and stuff like that. So so I'd kept myself in, you know, I was in healthy condition. And so I went back to class and just was felt so at home, especially again, around some people I knew. And, uh, it it didn't take long at all just to feel like, okay, this is where I should be. (laughs) Nice. And would you have changed anything in that process? You know, again, we, we get that time machine, you get to go back. In, in the process of getting back into training. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm bringing this up because this is not a subject that comes up often. It's not one that most people are willing to talk about and you seem like you're willing to talk about it. So how might someone who's listening, uh, take some, take some some knowledge from the, cir- the circumstances you went through that I went through that might make it easier or or um, create less anxiety for them yeah you well you know like for me it was easier because I was going to something that was familiar and I know that not everybody has that opportunity when it's familiar um, sometimes I, I can imagine some people maybe dealing with uh, a little bit of ego if they feel like, well, I'm, I'm going back. It's been a while. I'm not going to, you know, especially if they were, you know, somebody that was highly regarded in their school. And if they're like, boy, I really have gotten rusty. My 
I'm, you know, I know some people be like that. Uh, I, I personally didn't. I just went back. I was like, I'm ready to jump into it. But I know if somebody feels that way, hey, don't worry. No one's going to hold anything against you. You know, it's not like, oh, no, look at you. You didn't train. And now, you know, you're you're not looking as, as sharp as we, we know you used to be. Well, you know, no one's going to hold that against anybody. If, if they do, well, I'm sorry that that's your experience. But I really don't. I think most people are going to respect anyone who was, uh, even if you weren't the top student in your school, if you're just somebody who came in and were there regularly, people are going to be welcoming you back with open arms. Uh, but for those people who are, you know, maybe you've moved and uh, there's, you know, there's not a school that's uh, of your style, um, that's going to be one thing. Or let's say the culture is different. I mean, even in one part of the U.S. to another part of the U.S. Uh, can be, a, you know, even a little culture change for, for some of us. Um, I think you just got to, you know, just if, if you really want it, if you, you know, do do your research and just, you know, even if you go about it kind of easy and slow and you, you find the right school, just give it a shot. Even if it's just uh, some kind of trial program or something they have, just, uh, you know, and be upfront with the, the, the instructor too and just let them know, hey, you know what, it's, it's been a while. This was my path uh, in martial arts. I want to want to get back into it i'm feeling a little nervous a little even embarrassed or whatever it is let them know that because the good instructors out there are going to do everything they can to make you not feel any of that negative stuff they're going to be they're going to be all about helping you get back to who you are as a martial artist and uh, and again not all of them are going to be like that but you'll know if you go talk to somebody you're going to see their response, you're going to hear their words. And, you know, it might even take a couple of classes, but I think overall, you know, it's kind of a fear thing. I think, especially as adults, when we're all like in our culture, where it's like, everything's all about success and it's all about growth. And it's all about all this other stuff uh, that, that can make it hard, but we just got to tell ourselves, just forget about that. It's about me and my opportunity, me and my, my chance to do what, what I want to do at my pace. And, and, and if you, if you want to just take that step, and uh, to be honest, and I think I think anybody that that gives it that shot, I I can't imagine. I mean, because you and I know what the martial arts can do for any of us. Again, it doesn't matter what style, doesn't matter what age you are, how long you've done it. We all know that it just is a unique thing to do. That uh, I think you know anybody that pushes past that stuff and says, okay, it's been. 10 years, you know, and, and I'm older and I'm not in shape like I used to be. And if they just jump in and give it a shot and, and uh, acknowledge those negative feelings, those fears or whatever, but they just say, it doesn't matter. I'm doing this for me. I'm, I'm doing it because I want to, because I know I used to love it. I, I think I can't imagine anybody being like, boy, I regret that decision. I want to listen to Brian Lawrence ever again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right on we've got a pretty good uh, timeline for you and for your training. You know, we started now and we rolled backwards and we came forward, but I want to go back and I want to, I want to plug in a couple pieces and, and you're going to get the chance to decide where those pieces fit. And the first piece, almost everything we've talked about today has been overwhelmingly positive. And I'm, I'm going to guess that you're a pretty positive person but I'm also going to be really surprised if everything in your life has gone really, really well. So I'd like you to go back, find us something that's gone on that really sucked and how martial arts helped you get through it. Huh? Well, yeah. Um, I, I, I laughed a little bit ago about the positive person because, uh, Typically I am, but if my wife was here, she'd be like, mm, uh, sometimes. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we, we've we gone through, um, you know, the, some of the most challenging times have been, uh, you know, since I've, uh, we've been married and, um, and, you know, like that's when I was slowly kind of getting back into, I had been getting my, back into martial arts before I, I met my wife and then, um, and then we, we met and she got, uh, got sick early on, uh, in our marriage. And it's been this, uh, a long-term, you know, kind of battle for her. It's been very up and down, uh, like a roller coaster. And, and I know it, it this is a mixed thing I'm sharing. Like, it's not all, it's not all like, yeah, it helped me pull it through. 
or help me like pull through any of the, the challenging time um, because I know it also caused some some challenge here for my wife who was you know sick and just needing my comfort and my presence and all that and it was sometimes you know for me like going to a job some people you know think like hey there there's a, there's a break it's like yeah but that's work uh but for me you know when i would go and train and or i like either by my for me to train or for me to be teaching my students those were at least moments there where you know when i was thinking at home like man i, I i'm praying we get through this stuff and that she's going to be better and all that well i can say when i would be training those things aren't coming to the forefront those things are now on the side uh like in the beginning of our classes you know, we, we sit in silence and I tell people, hey, you know, this is a time where you can, uh, if you had something tough going on today, this is where we want to try and put aside. You know, if you got something that you're really excited about afterwards, well, we want to try and put that aside. You know, if you're somebody who prays, take this time to pray. Um, but I'll tell you what, even in that moment, as, as I'm praying before a class, it's not until I get, we, we get ready, we start that stretch, we start training, then it's like, okay, my mind's on this. I'm all about honing my my skills, my my mental skills, my physical skills. Or I'm here focused intently on my students. I'm I, I'm going to help them gain their you know skills that they need to. And that's kind of the thing that um, you know through through that stuff. Again, I say it, it very. It's it's a mixed thing because I'd want to be there for my wife, and she'd want me to be there. But I'd still I know that when um, you know we're dealing with that troubles especially if it caused, you know, any tension at home of just like oh, where things are going because it's been difficult on us with their health. When I'd go and train, that was a time where at least, you know, I know I could come down from it, come back and feel at least more like, okay, I'm here again. I'm, I'm ready without intentionally running away and hiding. I knew that that training um, gave me that chance just to focus on something completely different and, uh, and you know, and I and have that, like a break again. I say it with mixed feelings, um, but definitely that was a thing that uh, I know even from hearing other adults that are like, yeah, it's, it's a nice way when you have stresses that you can step away and you do that because your mind is so focused on what you're doing for however long your classes are. So I know it's a little long winded of an answer, but no, I, I no, hope, there, hope that there are no long winded <laughs> answers. If, if you know, if you know your history of the show, we, we are not even close to long winded. <laughs> there's, there's so much further we could go, but, but we won't. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's pretty powerful. And I, I think, you know, not every martial art starts a class with some sort of meditation. Um, in fact, based on my experience, the, it's the minority of classes do, but I've found that if it's something that's organized, great, but if it's not, it's part of how I get ready. You know, I, and, and finding my space in that class to, to have that time for myself, you know, which is, you know, it was my takeaway from what you just said, I think is so important. So you have to, you have to take care of you so you can take care of others. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely, you know, that's one thing that I feel like uh, as, a, as an instructor when it comes to adults, like like one of my big goals is to have uh, the martial arts school in my area that's known for a great adult program, uh, because I know that's not, not always the case. And, and I don't mean I'm not bashing anybody who's all about kids programs in their school. I know that's what a, a number of instructors focus on. Um, but you know, I have kids classes and I have adult classes and, um, and I really, I love working with adults and high schoolers too. Um, but, uh, it, I, I love getting to do that cause we can get into the really heady stuff and the real technical stuff. Um, yeah. and, and even the philosophical stuff that, that you can't really with, with a child, you know, when you talk about, you know, having to harm someone, <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be careful with how you explain that to a child when it comes to self-defense. But, you know, I, I, when adults, start a uh, martial arts program and they go, wow. Cause like how many times have we heard um, mom and dad are bringing their kid to class. And after a while they're like, why am I not doing this? And then they do it and they love it more than they love it more than the kid. Um, yes. And you're like, and I guess I know a lot of people like that, whether they're in my school or um, one of my real good friends has a big school with a lot of adults and that's how they are. These adults are heating it up. And, <clears throat> and whether it's that, that physical, 
that outlet where they again get to go and just focus on uh, on something uh, that's for themselves. It's helping themselves grow because they're feeling better physically, they're feeling better mentally, and that I, I, that's great. I mean, how many adults talk about that? Or even like one of my uh, students who, who's a, a mom in her uh, in her thirties, and she uh, was just saying, she's like, I love that first few minutes of class where we sit quietly. She said, I kind of get to go, ah, okay a little moment for myself. And I was like, that's the first time I've heard somebody say that to me about that. Just like, ah, uh, you know, it's like, I can sip away. I don't have the, the kids have already taken their classes. They're sitting there eating their dinner for the night. And, uh, and it definitely does um, give people that, that little moment. But even outside of the adult, uh, all of my, all of my kids classes too. same thing. We start every class where they sit quiet like that. And I feel, you know, these days we talk about, oh, all the benefits for children. Um, yet, I think a lot of the benefits <clears throat> that we used to see for children personally without, I don't want to get off tangent too much here, <laughs> or, uh, but I'll pull I, you back if you do. Don't I, worry. I, I feel like, um, I feel like we're losing a lot of that in schools these days. Um, when people are like, Oh, martial arts is great for your kids for, you know, whatever, you know, focus, self-discipline or any of those things. Um, I feel like sometimes we're missing some of the simplest things that we could, that we used to always do traditionally in martial arts. And maybe again, not all styles, like you, uh, but traditionally, um, you know, especially if we think back to the, the, you know, most common styles that have been, you know, we've been seeing in the U S over the last, you know, half a century plus, you know, karate and Taekwondo and all that kind of stuff. I, I feel like something as simple as that, that little moment of silence or meditation, whatever you want to call it, in the beginning of your class, I feel like even my, my, my little program for my uh, preschool and kindergartners, they sit quietly for a little bit. And I'm all about cross your legs, hands resting on your knees, your eyes are closed, your breathing's relaxed, you're sitting up straight, mm-hmm. and you wait till I clap my hands, and then, we're, and then we get to open them. Even that moment, and I keep it shorter for the little kids, but I, I'm like, <clears throat> excuse me, I use that moment as that, okay, we're kind of like getting centered, we're kind of like getting our minds ready for classes. We're, we're going to do this before we do anything else, really. We're, we're sitting here, even with those kids. And I feel like when we take out those traditional practices like that, again, you, you, whether you don't have to do that, but any of those things that were traditional that we know were benefits to maybe us when we were kids or the prior generation or the prior generation that in martial arts, I feel like we're, we're losing some of that, the value, that really valuable stuff that as simple as that seems, you know, and I'm not talking about having to teach them any like Eastern meditation techniques or anything. I'm just saying like, Hey, sit here quietly. You know, if you had a tough day, this is where we want to forget about it. Or I just tell the littlest kids cause they shouldn't have tough days. Really? Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but you know, just think about how you're going to have a great class. Think about, get ready, you know, how you're going to show focus, how you're going to treat everybody with respect, um, how you're going to work hard, and how you're going to have fun. Those are the four things I, I remind the kids, I'm like, just if they do those little things in that time of just like, because now they're picturing like, yeah, I'm going to treat everybody really well. Or, oh man, when we, when we kick today, I'm, I'm going to kick my hardest or I'm going to kick my highest or punch my fastest. Just those things alone help those kids taking that time also from how cluttered is our culture with all the noise. And if we're taking away that opportunity for those kids to sit quiet before a class, we're not giving them something that is crazy healthy. I think in our very loud culture, um, just with Western culture and all the ads and devices we have and all that kind of junk, um, I see I see a ton of value in that. And we, we don't do it for a long time, um, but we do it. It's there. The little kids, I mean, the longest I might have them sit like that is maybe a minute. <laughs> at, at the longest, it's a minute. It's probably more around a half minute or so. Um, yeah. But then the older kids go a little bit longer. But I see there's value to that, even for those young kids. I think there's a ton of value just to, because it's that one thing where, guess what? When your kid's struggling with, let's say, ADHD or something like uh, something like that, um, or you just have a, you know, kids that's got a lot of hyper energy, that moment is giving them a chance to practice. And it's in a disciplined environment, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take a peek. And I might have to say, hey, stop playing with your toes or close your eyes. You know, whatever it is. So I think there's a ton of value in that. So that's my tangent. Totally. Totally. No, that's that's good stuff. And and I think the one thing I want to tack on in this current landscape where we have so many things vying for our attention, it's so noisy, as you said, 
What's the thing that falls away? Boredom. What does boredom lead to? Imagination. And that imagination is critically important. And I am fearful, actually fearful, of what we're going to see in the next 10 to 20 years as we have people growing up who have not explored their own imagination as much as humans have evolved to do. So we'll see. So if you're a parent of children, uh, make sure they're bored at times. That boredom is important. And I'm, I'm not at all suggesting that uh, meditation before or after class is boring. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I, 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 I think it works certain, you know, a similar part of the brain. So let's, let's shift our time machine forward now. You're growing this school. It sounds like it's going well. It sounds like, you know, it sounds like you're happier. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. I, yeah. (laughs) Good. You know, I, good. If you, if you weren't, I'd be really sad. (laughs) No, no, absolutely. It's it's just funny you say that because as soon as you say that, I'm like quickly picturing, you know, the last 10 years at the same company. And, uh, you know, I, I started in a kind of a low league job and got a promotion to a pretty, pretty cool position out of that i i got promoted in that role and then moved in then got promoted into a, a supervisor of a clinic but even with those promotions which were all good things and you know there was more pay and there was even more freedom uh in a way like you know with my schedule and stuff like that it just still there was all this weight you know of just like you know anybody has and it wasn't that i like was like Ugh, every day about my job i mean there were days i actually really liked my job actually there were a lot of days i really liked um in that in that job in some of those different positions I had um but there was still also that other kind of the other junk that came with it you know the other uh, you know stuff that I don't have to deal with uh at this point um you know there's different stresses that we have now because it's you know the school's small it's not the same it's I don't have the income I had before you know I'm I'm praying that we're going to get there and hopefully we're going to get there soon um but yeah definitely uh definitely happier uh, getting to do something that I, I'm passionate about. Because uh, I'll tell you what, healthcare, not a passion to me at all. None of the aspects of it. I, again, I did my job to my the best of my ability, and I really enjoyed what I did a lot of the time, but I wasn't passionate about it. And and this is something okay. I, I love. I love to teach. I, I love to learn. Uh, I love to see people's po- like r- positive reactions to stuff. I mean, like just the other day, I had uh, some students promote to new belts, and one of them was a uh, a, a new student, uh, a boy who's I think about ten, and uh, and I just shot a little email just a couple of days after the test to his mom, and I said, you know, your son did great. It was, you know, I'm happy to have you guys as part of our martial arts family. And um, my wife found the response yesterday. The mom responded back in the evening, and and it really touched my heart, like what she said, because even her son, who again is, I think he's only ten, he said like he himself told her, I'm I'm growing in confidence. And he's only been with me a handful of months. And, uh, mm. and he's telling me this, telling his mom that he's feeling more confident and he's really excited about getting his new belt. And it's the second belt he's had. He got the first one with his uniform and now he got his first promotion and he's really excited. And he's such a, a great kid that I'm like in class, he's there, like he connects, he gets what it's about. He works hard. He smiles, you know? And I'm like, that is so awesome. Um, you know, and in my, you know, in my other jobs I've had, um, yeah, you could have some good moments, but it wasn't like you didn't feel like you were necessarily changing somebody's life. And, uh, and, and so the, just those little things, I mean, that's, that's really great stuff that as an instructor, mm-hmm. at least that you get to experience, um, that are, are pretty unique. And, and they're the ones that, you know, I, I don't even, I don't want to sound cliche, but I almost sound like I am. Cause I've heard these stories from, you know, hundreds of other instructors, but getting to hear them myself is like, that's really cool. I'm so excited mm-hmm. about this for, or her son, you know, and I know he's not the only one that feels that way, but that one sticks out in my head. That's awesome. I mean, those, those are the stories that make it worthwhile. You know, you yeah. leave a kid's class and, and it's been chaotic and you feel <laughs> like you got nothing done. And, you know, maybe they even revolted and collectively <laughs> refused to, to do anything. And you had to resort to some really barely adjacent game. 
to to pull them back in. Maybe that doesn't happen to you. It's happened you, to me. You must have been watching my classes lately. <laughs> <laughs> it happens more than I would like to admit when I teach. But then, you know, you see progress from one of those children or I mean, what you're talking about, that, that the kid actually sees their own progress, which right. never happens. I mean, exactly. That's so and that's what powerful. shocked me so much. I'm like, this kid himself said, Mom, I'm, I'm feeling more confident. I'm like, what kid at that age? Like, what even teenager admits that about themselves? And uh, so, yeah, that was really cool. That's awesome. Awesome. So let, let's, let's go back to where we were going. Oh, I love yeah. the tangents. You know, I love the tangents. <laughs> future. What's the future hold? If you look out, you know, you can pick whatever time stamps you want, you know, a year, five years, 20 years. What's going on with you and martial arts? Um, well, the biggest thing right now is getting the school to grow. Um, I mean, because I need to. Um, you know, my, my wife is, uh, is at home. She's, she's here taking care of things here with our, our little, little ones. Um, and, and even with her health, we know that that's not an option for her to have a regularly scheduled job outside of the home. Um, so it's really reliant on me. So this, this year in particular is a time for us to really, uh, for me to really dig deep and for us to see our school grow. So, so that's a big thing because if it doesn't grow, then my family isn't going to be taken care of. So, um, so that's my biggest thing that I got going on right now. And there's a lot of moving parts. Like I said, when I was doing it part-time, there were a lot of things I wasn't getting done and now it's full time. I was like, okay, all right, cool. You got all this time. You got all this stuff. And it's like, there's more stuff than I even realized. So um, a lot of it is just really moving ahead on that kind of stuff um, to build the school. Uh, you know, and I have other, and, and I got other programs I'm, I'm honing. I started one um, just last year that's uh, specifically for children with autism or related diagnoses. So I'm working on, um, growing that and uh, kind of honing that. I have uh, um, uh, uh, someone we met through the fostering system, foster care system, who is an occupational therapist that's going to work with us. <coughs> um, she's already coming and giving me some tips just from watching one of my private lessons. And, um, and so we're actually looking to partner uh, even more there, which is really awesome. She's a great woman. She's given me uh, opportunities to actually do uh, some Eskrima classes with uh, some of the uh, children she'd worked with in the foster care system. And, uh, you know, I'm, my other goals are, uh, I had worked with um, one of my students, he's in the National Guard and a uh, great student. And uh, a couple, we go, a couple years ago, he gave me the opportunity to uh, work with his National Guard unit on one of their weekend drills, which was a really cool opportunity. Um, so I'm, uh, talking with him about you know the opportunity to get back in there, and so I'm hoping that I can get more of those chances there. There, it's uh, neat when you can have that type of uh, captive audience. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll get to continue building on that. And uh, and other goals, I actually have one, uh, and not to you know, uh, you know, rain on you know, I don't want to take anything away from your show here, but I actually am looking at uh, last year I had started the kind of towards the end of the year was thinking of starting a martial arts podcast myself. So that's actually something that's been kind of in the, in the hopper is a, is a school gets moving along something I'd like to uh, uh, take it. a step into. So that's one of my goals no, uh, this year. I'll help you if I can. <laughs> hey, I, I figured, I, I, am, I, figured I don't you'd feel be a the guest. need to own this space. I've got sweet. <laughs> Let's do it. I mean, uh, as, as an aside, if anybody thinks I'm just paying lip service, martial arts podcast.com. I mean, we have put up everybody that has reached out or that we've wanted to, or that we knew about that, you know, their, their podcast feed worked. Um, you know, the, the more, the better. Yeah. So those, yeah, yeah that's uh, a few of the things that are, are kind of going on. Um, awesome. You know, good stuff. again, the big thing is, is growing that school. And then, you know, for my own training, um, you know, that's the thing that I think I, I don't want, you know, sometimes, I think some instructors can forget like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to keep growing myself. And, uh, and I, and I don't, <laughs> I pretty much weekly, uh, travel, uh, to train in, uh, Eskrima and I name Eskrima every, every week. Uh, a good friend of mine owns a school about 45 minutes away on the other side of Milwaukee. So I, I try to hit his school once a week. 
and uh, keep up with that. And the, the head of our system, Jason and I, comes to Wisconsin a couple times a year and does seminars. So I'm always trying to keep up with that um, just to grow in that. And in, in my Taekwondo, too, trying to make sure I'm put my, my time into that. So they're kind of the, the, all the, the goals. I don't like putting goals on ranks or anything like that because I tell my students the same thing of, you know, you work hard, ranks come. Um, and they come at the right time, but, uh, yeah. Ranks just a reflection of, of the work you've put in. Right. So exactly. Focus, and and I really, the work. I really try and, inst- and instill that in the child students I have ever since I've had this school, because I know that a lot of schools will actually use that as the tool to keep the kids motivated. I, I don't, uh, I tell them like your belt, I tell them, don't train for your belt, you know, however I word it with the kids, but I, I say your belt, I'll tell them it's an awesome goal. And I said, it is so cool, cool getting a new belt. I, I point at my belts and I show them how many stripes are in there. And I say, you know what, when I get to test for my next one, I'm going to be so excited to get that belt too, just like you guys are. But I make sure when I'm training, I work really hard. It doesn't, you know, whether or not I'm getting to test for a new belt and, and overall, like really, I think that the kids respond to it well. And, uh, and I, and I let my, the parents of the children know that too. If uh, if a child is just not there and there's a test coming up, I might even tell a parent who may have had their kid at the cell for a while, and I might just go up to them and say, hey, you know what? So-and-so is not quite ready. I want to make sure that when they test, they're ready. And never once has a parent said anything except, no, 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 that's great. That's you. If they're not ready, I want them to earn their belt. And I'm like, awesome. Because I, I, I don't want a parent thinking like, hey, we're here for us to get belts. And that's not it. You know, I want your child to grow. I want them to feel good about what they get. Uh, I want them to feel confident about their martial arts. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely don't like pushing the, the belt thing on my students. And, you know, even though myself might be like, it'd be cool to get to my next rank. Well, I'm not training for it. I just trained to get better as a martial artist. Awesome. Great philosophy. Now, if people want to find you online, email, website, social media, whatever, where would they go? Um, well, our website, which uh, is, of course, uh, www.lawrencemartialarts.com, but you got to spell Lawrence the right way. Lawrence is L-O-R-E-N-C-E, so lawrencemartialarts.com. Um, we're on Facebook, um, also lawrencemartialarts.com, just to again, make sure it's not L-A-W because you're going to be finding the wrong school. Actually, I don't think there is one like that, but maybe I should grab that, the wrong lawrencemartialarts.com for myself and redirect people to my page. But uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be a bad idea. And it's Brian, not Johnny. <laughs> right, right. It is Brian. However, that is funny because I forgot about the Karate Kid. Um, and one time we had a martial arts movie night for the martial arts school. And uh, we, were, we watched the original Karate Kid. And I had not seen it since I was a kid. And then I hear Mr. Lawrence. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I forgot all about that. So it was pretty <laughs> funny because my students are looking at me like, what, Mr. Lawrence? I'm like. Yeah. When your guest forum came in, that's all that was going through my mind. Was <laughs> that's awesome. Were, were those moments of of Mr. Lawrence throughout that throughout that film? So yeah. <laughs> and then of, of course at the school where I train in uh, in Escrima, they also uh, they have a couple other arts there too. And one of the guys that's been an instructor there, every time he'd see me, he's like, "Is there a problem, Mr. Lawrence?" <laughs> Every time, <laughs> every time, it became his it. his thing just to be like, "Is there a problem?" Sometimes you know just change up the tone. And I'm like, yeah, there's a problem. <laughs> He's like, oh, really? <laughs> That's so, yeah. awesome. I love you it. Got to have fun with that. You do. Not, you do. not everybody not gets fun, to. You won't keep going. <laughs> awesome. And it, how would you send us out? What words, you know, parting advice, whatever you want to call it, would you give up to the people today? You know, uh, the biggest thing, it kind of, kind of two big things. I think they kind of go hand in hand is really just as a martial artist, having an open mind. And I know that that too could sound cliche because I know a lot of other guys say it, but I know not all of them do. Um, really just as a student, have an open mind. Even if you've trained in one style for 30 years and you're like, no, I, I love this. That's great. I don't have any problem with that because that's, I think that should be, you know, you, you find a style and you, and you go, hey, I'm, I really like this style. I really have a passion for it. But opening yourself up to other training, even if it's just going to, seminars of uh of another style or another instructor or something like that um but if you have that opportunity to train a little bit in another style i think that if if 
someone hasn't done that and they've been in training for a while, I suggest they do that. I mean, if you're only in like one or two years, I'd be like, hey, wait, no, 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 just just focus, you know, really get your groundwork somewhere that's, I think that's best. But yeah, if you've, you've been around for a while, uh, try something out, even if it's just for a little season, just so you can go, cool, now I understand this, whether it's the strengths, the weaknesses or whatever, um, or it helps you see if there are any strengths and weaknesses in you yourself as a martial artist or um, some of the things that you've been taught. And uh, and the other thing is too, you know, with with the, the internet, you know, I mean, because you wouldn't have seen this when I started because, I mean, how many people would have been on the internet back in the uh, early mid-90s um, that don't let people like pick up, like tear down your style or your art because sadly I see that even from even and, and I'm not going to say where but I've seen it in in audiences where I'm like are you kidding me you guys of all people are going to be tearing apart somebody's art or style um and and I and so I mean really don't let if you do some style and you hear somebody say something about it so what I mean if if you're you know if you realize that maybe there's a flaw in something in some aspect of it well then you know that's where you maybe have to do a little research uh dig deep you know maybe ask questions to make sure you understand what's going on uh with that but but don't let anybody just say like you know don't let that stuff get to you cuz i think it's happening more and more um with how negative people can be hiding behind their their keyboards and say some stuff about so and so style and all that cuz that's not what it's about um, and, and besides, it comes down to the martial artist. And, and if somebody doesn't like a particular style and you love it, what's wrong with that? Hey, if, if you love Chevy and somebody says, no, they're, they're stupid. I want, you should only drive Ford. Who cares? <laughs> you know what? It's, it's that kind of thing. So, you know, just to, for people to move, you know, just to be bold about what they do and, and get the best training they can keep an open mind with it. So did you pick up on the theme? The theme I left with was how Mr. Lawrence defined so much of what he did by how it served other people. His students, the other people in his life, his family. And that was really powerful for me. I think you can tell a lot about a person, not just by what they say, but how they say it. Not by necessarily their actions, but how they tell the story of how those things happened. And to me, my big takeaway here is that Mr. Lawrence is as dedicated a martial artist as we've had on this show, but one who I suspect loves teaching and loves working with his students. So for any of you listening who get to call Mr. Lawrence your instructor, I suspect you are very, very lucky individuals. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on the show and sharing your time with us. Go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for show notes with links and photos and more about this episode as well as every other episode we've ever done. If you're down to support Whistlekick and the work that we're doing, you've got all kinds of options. You can go to whistlekick.com and use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. Or you can leave a review, buy a book, or help with our Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick. If you have suggestions for guests, how to improve the show, social media content, anything, I want to hear it. Email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. And if you want to follow us on that social media, it's at whistlekick. I've had a great time today. I hope you did as well. And until our next meeting, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 